Today we're going to be looking at the development of Western Canada. So the last time we checked, there was four provinces that made up the Dominion of Canada. Ontario, Quebec, Nova Scotia, and New Brunswick. However, there was still the threat to the south with the United States potentially able to invade. As a result, those four colonies wanted to make sure that they started to get more and more land in order to be a stronger front against an American invasion. As well, they didn't want the Americans taking over Rupert's land or any other land beside them in order to mean that the Americans would be surrounding them. Rupert's land became very important to the development of Canada as a country. If we remember back to grade 7 history, Rupert's land was owned by the Hudson's Bay Company for over 200 years by 1867 because in 1670 King Charles II of England granted a charter to the Hudson's Bay Company. This charter gave the Hudson's Bay Company a monopoly for trading on all lands draining in to Hudson's Bay. This territory was called Rupert's Land and the Hudson's Bay Company controlled Rupert's Land from 1670 until 1869 when they sold their interests to Canada. In 1869 when Rupert's Land was sold to Canada there were many people living in the area that were spread over the huge 7,777,000 square kilometers known as Rupert's Land. First Nations lived there mainly and were hunters. They also trapped, fished, and gathered products from the environment. The First Nations people living in Rupert's Land never believed that the land belonged to the Hudson's Bay Company or the company had the right to sell it. The government in Ottawa also did not tell the First Nations about the sale. News of the sale was a surprise. However, for First Nations living in this land, their life was also changing. Americans came to the Northwest to trade whiskey to the First Nations in exchange for furs. However, this land had no laws in it, and the First Nations people were often killed if they refused to trade with the Americans. In addition, similar to past, when the traders came, they brought with them new diseases, and many First Nations people died of smallpoxes, smallpox and other illnesses. Furthermore, on the prairies, in Rupert's land, the main source of food for First Nations people was also disappearing because bison had been hunted for sport. So less than 50 years earlier, millions of bison roamed the prairies. However, because people from the United States and Eastern Canada would hunt it and then simply let the bodies rot on the prairies, there was now less than a thousand remained. So the First Nations way of life and food source was drastically changing. In addition to First Nations people, there was also Métis people living in this land. Approximately 10,000 Métis lived in the Northwest. About half of the Métis lived in the Red River settlement. Most Métis were ancestors of French fur traders and First Nations women. However, some Métis were ancestors of British fur traders and First Nations women. All Métis were proud of their culture, and it blended traditions from Cree, Ojibwe, French, and English. And the Métis had their own laws and customs. They worried that the European settlers might want them to give up their way of life, which began one of the largest conflicts in Canadian history as Canada attempted to expand west. 